Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Paleocene, many of the major modern mammal groups familiar to us today emerged after the KPG mass extinction. One such lineage were the Perissodactyls, the so-called odd-toed ungulates. These animals first appear approximately 61 million years ago in the form of the Phenacodontids, a family of stem Perissodactyls that developed in North America and later spread into Europe. While members of this group were quite primitive in some aspects, such as their possession of long, heavy tails, in other ways they were quite advanced for their time, having teeth well adapted for browsing and reduced first and fifth digits on the feet. These traits would be inherited by their later, more derived perissodactyl relatives, which became wildly successful herbivores during the Eocene. Indeed, these animals were far more diverse than they are today, with a multitude of sometimes quite strange extinct forms branching off during the early Eocene. Only three families have survived into modern times, with these being the horses, tapirs, and the subject of today's video, the rhinos. Basal members of all three of these groups would have looked very similar in life, being small, forest-dwelling browsers that would have resembled trunkless tapirs. Among the oldest of the rhinoceratoids was the genus Hyracus, which was native to early Eocene North America and Eurasia. About the size of a golden retriever, this small hornless animal was a fairly slender browser of soft foliage with somewhat elongated limbs. A successful form with up to seven known species, Hyracus probably lived a lifestyle comparable to modern forest-dwelling antelopes, and would have been preyed upon by mesonychids and oxyenids. Many basal rhinoceratoids were also relatively small and slender animals. The Hyracodontids were a perfect example of this, being lightly built and probably quite agile runners. Also lacking horns and possessing elongated limbs, these browsing herbivores would have strongly resembled the early horses with which they shared their environments. However, the structure of their teeth indicate their close relationship to modern rhinos. Emerging during the Middle Eocene, Hyracodontids were commonplace in North America and Asia, with a typical example of the group being the genus Hyracodon. About the size of a pony, this agile animal possessed three-toed feet similar to those of modern rhinos and tapirs, along with a proportionally large, broad-snouted skull. Thriving in the increasingly open woodlands of Eocene and Oligocene North America, later species of Hyracodon appear to have adapted toward a diet composed mostly of grasses. These early rhino relatives remained modestly sized during the Eocene, probably due to the fact that another lineage of perissodactyls, the Brontotheres, inhabited the multi-ton herbivore niche taken by modern rhinos and elephants today. With the extinction of the Brontotheres and the more archaic Dinoceratons at the end of the Eocene, rhinoceratoids would have the space needed to expand in size. However, one particular family would develop more massive proportions during the late Eocene, with these being the Aminodontids. Although often described as being semi-aquatic hippo-like animals, this only applies to the derived Metaminodontini clade. Most members of the group were terrestrial browsers instead, with a defining feature of the group being the possession of large tusks formed from the canines. These were probably utilised as either a defence against predators such as hyenodonts, or an intraspecific competition. Some aminodonts demonstrated a strong degree of convergence with modern tapirs, with very high nasal openings suggesting the presence of a short trunk. The late Eocene to early Oligocene genus Caderkodon was a good example. Native to northern China and Mongolia, which was a humid subtropical region at this time, this stocky, low-browsing herbivore was comparable to a modern lowland tapir in terms of size, and probably lived a similar lifestyle. Another tapir-like form, Caderkotherium, was native to Eurasia and was the youngest aminodontid known from good material, persisting into the late Oligocene in Pakistan. The most massive member of the group was Metaminodon, a superficially hippo-like animal that inhabited the swamplands of North America, China and Myanmar during the late Eocene and Oligocene. Metaminodon planifrons, the largest species, was about 4 metres or 13 feet in length and 1.8 metric tons in weight, with its front feet possessing four digits in contrast to the three toes present in modern rhinos. The skull was large and rather shortened, with prominent canine tusks and fleshy prehensile lips, utilised for hoovering up riverside vegetation. 
In addition, Metaminodon's postcranial skeleton demonstrates a number of features of a semi-aquatic niche, including a broad barrel-shaped torso, relatively weak neck muscles, and eyes and nostrils positioned high on the head. Due to their large size and dangerous tusks, adults of this genus would have been relatively safe from predation, although calves would have been vulnerable to the contemporary Hyenodon horridus and the bear dog Daphoenus. The Aminodontids would not outlive the Oligocene, despite dubious claims of the group persisting into the Middle Miocene. Their decline and extinction was probably due to the drying and cooling climate of the time, reducing favourable forested and swampy habitats. Another successful family of rhinoceratoids were quite different, tending towards high browsing ecological niches. These were the Paraceratheriids, renowned for producing some of the largest terrestrial mammals of all time. However, early relatives of these animals were far more modest. Indeed, the oldest known member of the family, the early Eocene Papacerus, was the size of a large dog, and inhabited the tropical forests of China and Kazakhstan. A browsing herbivore with an elongated, narrow and hornless skull, Papacerus probably evolved from Hyracodon-like ancestors and fed on a diet of soft vegetation. Later Eocene forms are known from more complete material and demonstrate the distinctive anatomy of Paraceratheriids more clearly. The horse-sized genus Juchia was native to the lush tropical forests of China and possessed a fairly light build with an elongated neck and limbs. Based on its triangular molar teeth and sharp protruding incisors, Juchia was probably a strict browser feeding on leaves on high branches where most other mammals couldn't reach. Animals such as this survived into the Oligocene and were able to expand drastically in terms of size, likely due to the extinction of competitors and the opening up of Asia's forests. Although several genera were present in Asia during the Oligocene, the largest and most common of these was the impressive Paraceratherium. First appearing in the fossil record approximately 34 million years ago, this massive beast stood about 4.8 metres or 15.7 feet high at the shoulder and weighed between 15 to 20 tonnes. This is far larger than any modern land mammal and ranks among the biggest terrestrial animals of the Cenozoic, with the only competitor being the enormous elephantid Paleoloxodon nomadicus. When Paraceratherium was first described in the early 20th century, it was only known from skull material and isolated postcranial elements. Due to this, it was initially thought that the animal possessed a heavy build similar to modern rhinos, and truly astronomical weight estimates of 30 tons were proposed. We now know that Paraceratherium was a more slender, long-legged animal that inhabited a high browsing niche comparable to modern elephants and the long-extinct sauropod dinosaurs. The limbs were pillar-like in order to support the animal's great weight, with Paraceratherium only capable of moving at a human jogging pace. The largest skulls belonging to this genus are around 1.3 meters or 4.3 feet long and 61 centimeters wide. It also had a long forehead, which was smooth and lacked the roughened area that served as attachment points for the horns of other rhinos. The bones above the nasal region are long, and the nasal incision goes far into the skull. This indicates that Paraceratherium had a prehensile upper lip, similar to that of the black rhinoceros or Indian rhinoceros, or perhaps a short proboscis similar to tapirs. The molar teeth were simple and low-crowned, which indicate that this animal was a browser with a diet consisting of relatively soft leaves and shrubs. Up to six species are known and inhabited a wide range that stretched from Bulgaria to Mongolia, although fossil material is significantly more common in Asia. This region appears to have consisted of arid and semi-arid savanna woodlands, with tree cover being relatively limited, meaning that Paraceratherium individuals may have had very large home ranges and might have engaged in seasonal migrations. It is currently unknown if these massive rhinos were solitary or lived in small herds, although it has been suggested that females and their young may have travelled together. Being hindgut fermenters like other perissodactyls, these animals would have drawn little nutrients from their food, meaning that very large amounts of foliage would have to have been consumed. Due to their massive size, adults towered over all terrestrial mammalian predators of this time, and would have been immune to predation from hyenodonts, bear dogs and antelodonts, although young calves are more susceptible. 
However, even adult individuals that dwelt in the Bugti Hills region of Pakistan may have fallen prey to the enormous crocodilian Astorgosuchus. Despite thriving for 11 million years, Paraserotherium and relatives became extinct at the end of the Oligocene, roughly 23 million years ago. There were probably numerous reasons behind this decline, which include climate change and competition from other groups of large herbivorous mammals. Asia's ecosystems continued to become more open, with the first substantial areas of grassland developing by the Oligocene-Miocene boundary. As massive browsers that relied on savanna forests, Paraserotheriids would have been negatively impacted by these changes. Also significant was the arrival of proboscideans from Africa, which entered Eurasia by the late Oligocene. These animals would have competed with the giant rhinos, and may have hastened the reduction of forested areas, given the destructive foraging behaviour of modern elephants. These factors, when combined with a very slow rate of reproduction, meant that Paraserotheriids would soon fade into extinction. This would leave only a single family of rhinoceratoids to persist into the Miocene, with these being the familiar modern rhinoceratids. However, this group was also quite diverse and will require their own future video. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be focused on more Permian synapsids, so until then I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.